KETV Newswatch 7, chronicling the stories impacting our community. Stories making a difference. Stories that matter to you. This is KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. In the fabric of America, they are the toughest threads, our bravest and most selfless. They raised their hands, stepped forward, and served for each other, for you, and me. One of the first things they learned was the code that every service member lives by. Leave no one behind. Now all of us need to live by it too, because some veterans are being left behind. 20 of them take their own lives every day. Why? It's not simple. It never is. What matters is that we're there for them, just like they were there for us. Good morning. I'm David Earle, and this is KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. Just yesterday, we honored our nation's servicemen and women as we marked Veterans Day. This morning, we're devoting our next half hour to the local groups helping veterans in our community. First, though, a look at a few numbers. As you heard from Tom Hanks in that public service announcement, an average of 20 veterans die a day from suicide. So the VA has designated the next five days as Suicide Prevention Week. It's an issue we cannot afford to ignore with 27,000 veterans living here in the Omaha metro area. That is about 6% of our population. And joining me now to talk more about the programs and the services the Omaha VA provides is Heather Bojanski, who's the program manager of transitional care management, and Joe Gibbs, who served in the Army from 2003 to 2009 and spent 18 months in Mosul. Thank you both for being here with us this morning. Heather, I want to start with you. Tell us what transitional care management is. It is a program that lets veterans know what is available to them when they come back from active duty and a combat zone. Um, we provide health care and outreach and mental health services in clinics in Omaha, Grand Island, and in the Lincoln area. Joe, why did you join the military? Um, like a lot of servicemen in my generation, 9-11 had a huge impact on my life. Um, at that moment, I decided that I was going to uh, join and figured the front lines would be the best place for me. Yeah, how old were you when 9-11 happened? 17. 17. So yeah. it really had an impact on, on kind of that whole generation, right? Yes, yes it did. And we talked about you being stationed at Mosul. What was your mission there? Um, Mosul, I was, uh, I was infantry and a combat engineer, so I was attached to the 25th Infantry Striker Brigade that was, they did patrols throughout Mosul. Um, I was tasked to the EOD task force, which is the Ordnance Disposal Unit, and, um, what we did was we would be called for ordinance, any kind of ordinance, and we would go out and uh, blow it up or disarm it and take it somewhere where we could blow it up. Yeah, a lot of, I, I would imagine, like roadside bomb type IEDs, type stuff. V-beds, yeah. all that. Yeah, so, so what was the transition for you back to civilian life here like? Um, it, it was rough. Um, I wasn't taught much. Uh, Early in life, most of my learning came from the Army. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to be on the front lines. I didn't realize that infantry and combat engineering doesn't uh, amount to anything in the civilian world. So it was very hard uh, to get my start in, uh, after I got out. Yeah. Heather, uh, why is it important for veterans to ask for help once they're back here stateside? Um, what Joe's talking about is very common. Military life and civilian life is very different. So it's, we want everyone to know it's important to ask for help because um, it can be very hard. It's hard to get back into a work life, a family life, and everything in general changes once you go to war. So it's on their own time frame though. Everyone needs some kind of help, and we just want them to know that services are available to them. Yeah, how do you reach out to somebody who may be reluctant to ask for that help? 
Um, we usually will talk to their families, their units. Uh, we will meet with them, family, friends, anyone. But it's on their own time frame, and it's never too late. Any time is a time for help. Yeah. Joe, uh, what did you struggle with, and how did the VA help? Um, I struggled in um, a few areas. Um, I I got into a little bit of trouble after about a year um, of coming home. A lot of people don't understand that issues don't just start coming as soon as you get into the civilian world. Yeah. A lot of it is different pressures and trying to cope with different things. And so I... Uh, I got into some trouble, it woke me up, and so I started looking for services. Um, and it's not a one-time deal. You can't go in with, a, with thinking that you'll talk to one person and all your issues will be solved. Um, it's definitely a progressive uh, learning experience. Yeah, and an ongoing thing, right? Yes, um, the VA in Omaha has been a great help uh, since I've moved here. I've been working with them for seven years. Um, I also have been working with programs um, with my wife and children. Um, and I also learned that uh, uh, riding my motorcycle was great. And I've been able to link up with veterans that have went through the same issues as me through the American Veterans Motorcycle Club. And being around them, I am seeing the camaraderie that I've been missing, the loyalty that I've been missing, and the patriotism. Yeah. Uh, Heather, do people wait too long to reach out? I know Joe has been involved. What about other folks who may, may wait too long? There's no such thing as waiting too long. Everyone is on a continuum. Some people may seek out help right away. Some people, it may take them time to realize that they may need help, and there's never a wrong time, though. They can always get help when they're ready because it's just like anything else. Until they're ready to seek it, it won't work. Sure. Joe, what would you say to uh, other folks who are coming back from overseas about the help that the VA has? How would you encourage them to, to reach out and seek that help? Um, I, I definitely try to encourage uh, veterans that uh, are thinking, if, if you're to the point to where you think you might have a problem and need help, then you're definitely there. Um, it is hard. The stigmatism behind getting help for a soldier of any branch is very hard. You're, you are taught that you can take care of yourself and your brothers. So the civilian world has been dealing with getting rid of that stigmatism really good. And I, a lot of people are asking more for my generation and the older generations now. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you for sharing your story with us today. It, it really means a lot. Um, and I hope that, that a lot of other veterans who maybe haven't sought that help yet are listening to you this morning and, and can reach out to, to the folks at the VA. Heather, thank you. Joe, thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking with another local group committed to making a difference with its At Ease and Buddy Check programs. You're watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. Right now, there are tens of thousands of veterans and their loved ones dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. We know it as PTSD, but there is help available thanks to groups like Lutheran Family Services and its At Ease program. They sponsor a luncheon every May at the CenturyLink Center to raise money for the life-saving work they do. Welcome back to KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. We are dedicating our show this morning to our veterans. And joining me from Lutheran Family Services is Scott Anderson, founder of the At Ease USA program, Barry Petaway, a veteran life coach, Adam Armstrong, and a peer support specialist, and Kim Jones, who is a therapist. Thank you all for being here this Thanks, morning. Thank you, uh, thank you. Scott, I want to start with you. Tell us why you started At Ease. Um, in 2007, the uh, Actually, President Bush published a study called the Report on Wounded Warriors, and the main uh, kind of surprising result was that only 30% of 
military who were eligible for PTSD treatment who were diagnosed ever actually received it. So our, our mission was not only to try to close that gap and to try to get treatment uh, to more people, but also not just uh, uh, combatants, but their, their spouses, their family members, their moms and dads and so forth, who uh, we uh, discovered were just as much affected in a lot of cases. Yeah, PTSD doesn't just affect the individual suffering That's from right. it, but those around them as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, do veterans have to pay for the help that they receive? No. No, it's absolutely free. And, and why is that important? Well, we just didn't, we wanted to remove all of the obstacles that, that existed. Um, we're 100% uh, confidential and anonymous uh, because some veterans are concerned that some, there may be a record of their treatment um, in their military record or otherwise. Uh, so it's entirely anonymous and confidential and there's no uh, cost so that that's not an obstacle either. Yeah. Barry, you're an Army veteran. Uh, tell us why you joined and what your experience was like. Well, uh, I joined the Army right after high school. and. The reason I joined was I had several members within my community who were actively in the military. My uncle, for one, had spent time in Vietnam, and it was impressive to me. Being that I got out of high school and I really didn't have a great plan in place, so I had a buddy of mine who was going out to the recruiter's office to check out maybe he wanted to join. And just so happened I went in, spoke with the recruiter. Next thing I know, I'm signing the paper to join and go to the military. And he did make it in, so boom, here I am in the military. But it was a great experience for me. I really enjoyed it. You currently run the Addie's Counseling Program at Douglas County Corrections. Tell us about that and why that is so important. Yes, sir. The um, Geo Diversion Life Coach consists of me going in and really doing peer-to-peer -peer with the guys. Um, I have a lot of... Um, familiar things that they've gone through I've also dealt with. So it makes it a lot easy for me to be able to reach out to help these guys. So the jail diversion is to help them to turn their lives around and not end up back in jail. Yeah, we recently started a veterans court here in Douglas County and you help out with that as well. What purpose does that serve and why is it really important for that opportunity to be available to um, folks in the criminal justice system who are also veterans? Okay, great. Uh, a lot of the guys are dealing with PTSD, TBI, and other mental health issues. Um, and a lot of the crimes that probably was committed is based off of some of the ills the ailments that they had. So what we try to do is introduce them to what Eddie's has to offer. And sitting with the course gives me an opportunity to share some of that experience with them. Yeah, and, and that I bet is experience that uh, lends well to uh, your job as a veteran life coach, right? Can you tell us just a little bit more about that? The veteran life coach, um, I go into Douglas County twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays. And I do skill uh, class training with the guys from like one to two. And I mainly try to focus on a lot of personal behavior, whether it's cognitive uh, behavior and actually dealing with anger management. Because a lot of the guys, has, they have a lot of anger going on. So I try to share with them some of my own personal experience because I've gone through a few things myself. Yeah, are you ever startled by the number of veterans that are in jail right now? Well, um, there's a number of 57 veterans in Douglas County Jail, but we only have 27 that are actually in the veterans mod. Um, I go in there with the guys, and you know, like I share with those guys, there's nothing different between myself and them. The only difference is they're in here and I'm out there. And being a military veteran myself, um, it gives me a edge to be able to sit with them, to talk with them, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Adam, you are also a veteran as well, and you started the Buddy Check program. Can you tell us about that? What is that? Well, I've had the opportunity to work for Lutheran Family Services in the Addies program for about two and a half years. And two years ago, there was something going around on Facebook of just checking in with your buddies, like check in with those you served with, see how we're doing. And we all hear the statistics about veteran suicide and, and where that, that trend is heading. And we thought, why not do this in person? And so a good buddy of mine actually brought that up. He said, man, why don't we just get together? And I said, you know what? Addie's has a little bit of funding. Let's just go have pizza in Grand Island and see what happens. And we had 35 veterans show up the first month we did that. And through that, through, since September 2015, we've actually grown that to a statewide deal. We now have 10 gatherings across the state, and that's all the way from Scotts Bluff to here in Omaha to Norfolk to Fairbury, you know, every, in here and there and everywhere in between. And we continue to get more uh, interest. We have about three or four groups that will probably be starting around the first of the year. So what we found is we take away from that stigma of support groups of, hey, I need help. It's just called come out and meet fellow veterans, get together and tell war stories, talk about basic training, you know, just get together, have a slice of pizza, laugh, and meet your brothers and sisters. 
and we found that to be very effective. Yeah, Adam, uh, how do you get a buddy? How do you get a buddy? Yeah. Well, a buddy to me is anybody who signed that line. Yeah. So that that's my brother or my sister without, you know, without a doubt. And that doesn't matter when you served, where you served, what area you served in. You know, we already have that correlation. We have that commonality. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you're at, whether, you know, it's from somebody in my era or somebody from Vietnam to my grandpa that served in Korea. We can always relate to something that has to do with service. So when we come together, it might not be the exact camaraderie that we had within our unit, but it's something that's there that's tangible for us to say, hey, here's somebody who gets it and somebody that if I need to call them in the middle of the night is gonna be there to have my back. The sense of community here stateside that maybe you didn't have when, or, or you don't have here stateside that, that you had when you were um, you know, together as a unit. Exactly, yeah. and whether that's uh, deployable or whether it's when you're, you know, CONUS back here in the States, you know, a lot of that comes back to just having that commonality and that, that, that thing that we get as veterans that non-veterans just don't have that. Yeah. Kim, uh, you are also uh, a veteran as well. Um, and you're counseling families who've experienced trauma or suffering from depression or PTSD. How did you get started doing that? Well, when I joined the Air Force, I was in for 10 years, and then I got medically retired. Um, it was not what I wanted to happen, but it, it's what happened. And once I found a manageable level of recovery, I wanted to help other veterans and their families find a way to do the same thing because I know recovery is possible. And so I was able to use veteran benefits and obtain my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And then fortunately work at Lutheran Family Services in the At Ease program. Yeah, and give back. Um, yeah. What is the difference between depression and PTSD? Because there is a difference, right? There is. So PTSD is an anxiety disorder that comes about after experiencing a traumatic um, situation. And it can be life-threatening, non-life-threatening, can be combat-related, it can be domestic violence, it can be sexual assault, it can be witnessing something, and it's an anxiety disorder that can include depression. Depression, on the other hand, is a mood disorder, and it, major depressive depression is generally like, a, it can be lifelong, but it's treated through medication and therapy and other um, different types of services. So depression can be a part of PTSD, but one's an anxiety disorder and one's a mood disorder. Okay, and there's a lot of resources available that At Ease uh, has for folks who are dealing with all of this. Scott, can you tell me uh, how, if, if folks are watching this and need help, how can they reach out to you guys? Well, one of the best ways is to go to uh, the website at easeusa.org, at easeusa.org. Um, and that uh, site contains um, lots of links to uh, Lutheran Family Services and to other partners that we work with in the community, that we fund in the community. Um, great place for information and, uh, and also for getting access to these fine people. Yeah, wonderful. Well, Scott, Barry, Adam, Kim, thanks so much for being here with us today and sharing your Thank stories you. and for all of the work you're doing. Uh, it really is life-saving work for veterans in the community, so thank you. Thanks, David. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be right back talking to another local veteran who saw a problem and stepped up. First, a reminder that your comments are an important part of the show. If you want to be heard, email news at ketv.com. We love hearing from you. We'll be right back. You're watching KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Take a look here at the new headquarters for a local nonprofit dedicated to helping former servicemen and women. Moving Veterans Forward is based in Papillion and partners with area agencies to find veterans a place to live and move in with everything that they need. And joining me now is founder Ron Hernandez, who's also an Army veteran. Ron, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Here. Tell me more about the program and what was behind starting it. Uh, what started was basically a calling on you. My, I was at the end of my military career, had a friend that uh, was going to be moving into a home and he had been homeless for a long time and he really didn't have anything and that was the spark. I had some extra furniture, gave it to him and that's what started moving veterans forward. Yeah, and you guys now have uh, that great new facility. Yes. Um, tell me about the homeless veterans issue. I mean, this is something that really is um, a, a problem that needs solving. It, it is, and it's another battle. It's a battle in a war that we're actually fighting here on the home front. It's yeah. not on a, the traditional battlefield. 
and uh, we're fighting one little battle at a time helping our men and women. Yeah, so you're doing what you can out of your office in Papillion. Uh, how many people have you helped so far? As of today, we have moved 921 veterans in six and a half years. In just this calendar year, we're already at 189. That is fantastic. You're, um, did you struggle with your adjustment to civilian life after you came back? Um, no, not really. Um, the only struggle I had was I miss it. Yeah. I miss wearing the uniform every day in the mission, but my transition being a uh, civilian, uh, was, there was no issues. Yeah. What do you, what do you make of the Omaha area's um, ability to, to welcome veterans back? Do you find Omaha a community that really d does a good job with that? Uh, the metropolitan area loves our veterans. Yeah. I mean, y if you need the help, you just give a shout out and everybody is there to help our, our veterans. It's a great community. Yeah. So who do you partner with here locally to, to help you accomplish what you're doing? I mean, it takes a lot of folks and a lot of uh, stuff, right, to, mm -hmm. to help veterans get a place to live and have everything that they need. Yes, I have uh, two gentlemen, Dewey and James. They're there every day. Uh, we do all the heavy lifting. And then I have a group of about 10 other volunteers, and we are all 100% volunteer. There's no paid employees. And uh, they're more in the background where they sort the items, they stock my shelves for me, and they take care of the warehouse. Yeah, walk me through what a, a, a typical veteran who uh, needs help from you mm -hmm. uh, could get from your organization. Um, we carry everything in my warehouse. When they come to me, they have nothing except for whatever's in their suitcase or their backpack. We furnish their entire home with everything. And... Um, that's pretty much what we do. I just imagine that your house was taken out in a tornado and you're standing on a curb with nothing. We come in and we furnish that entire home. Yeah. Um, if someone needs help from your group, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is give me a phone call. My number is 402-301-6300. We're based right in Papillion. And my website, there's a lot of information there. It's mvfne.org. Yeah, and if somebody wants to help, I'm sure there's a lot of folks who have extra stuff around the house that they're looking to get rid of that is perfectly fine that somebody else could use. How do they donate that to you? Uh, there's several different ways. You can bring it to us. Uh, we have a drop-off location at our site in Papillion. Um, or you can get on a waiting list. We have one truck and just a couple guys. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks. Uh, we can come out and pick it up. Sure. Um, what is one thing that you want people to know about uh, moving veterans forward? Um, for me personally, a thank you to the community. Yeah. If it wasn't for the community, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today. And I'm kind of that middle person between that person that wants to help a veteran and uh, getting that to the veteran. Yeah. And uh, we're there for the veterans and uh, it's more of a thank you to everybody out there. Well, Ron, thank you for what you're doing and thank you for your service as well. Um, it, it's an amazing job and it's uh, really necessary and, and life-saving really to, to get veterans into a home that they can call their own. So thanks. Thank you. Well, one quick clarification here. The At Ease Luncheon we mentioned is funded by At Ease USA. Remember, if you missed any part of the show or want to watch it again, share it with a friend or are looking for any links to some of the resources we mentioned, it's online right now at KETV.com. Just go to our homepage and click on the menu button there, then look for Chronicle. I'm David Earle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.